Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about white bags. Many of you all know I am a huge fan of white bags and I didn't used to be, it actually took me quite a while to get my first white style, but as soon as I did, I realized how useful and versatile they can be. So I kept opting for white and now I have a collection of 11 different styles. So I thought I would go over all the different varieties I have. I have everything from clutches all the way through to larger tote bags. I am gonna be ranking them. I would keep mind that I still own all of these so I'm a huge fan of every style that I have um, but I am still gonna be ranking them from best to worst or favorite to kind of least favorite. I'm also going to be going over versatility and then also color transfer just trying to answer some of the questions that I frequently get about white style so I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. So first up, uh, my absolute favorite white bag, and I think what kind of properly um, cemented my slight obsession with white bags, this wasn't the first one that I got, um, but it's the first one that I really just used a ton and made me consider white for every future bag, um, just because of how versatile it was and how well it's done in terms of wear and tear. So it is the Saint Laurent wristlet, um, and ironically enough, it actually broke um, during our trip to Mexico. I don't really know what happened. I kind of put it down, and then when I went to pick it up, um, the strap had fallen off. So so I do need to fix it. I do think I will be able to, um, but yeah, that was quite sad. But nonetheless, I still absolutely love it. It is just such a fantastic style. I think um, value for money wise, I think it's fantastic. You can get very similar looking bags from Saint Laurent, which cost pretty much double the cost of this. And you know, you can feel the difference in terms of the quality and the weight, um, but I still think that all things considered, this one just can't be beat. Um, it has that really great classic Saint Laurent look. The quality is still fantastic. It's extremely durable. I've had no issues with wear and tear. You know, anytime I get something on it, I wipe it off and it does just fine. And you know, I often use these on dinner dates with Dan and he has the tendency to spoil things and it still looks spotless because you can just wipe it clean. So I absolutely love that. It's big enough for all of my essentials. Um, it's not huge, so it's definitely a, a pair down style but I love it and I can't fault it and especially when you take into consideration the price you know it's still obviously a luxury item but I think it's priced very well and I just love it so definitely my favorite if something happened to this I would just rush out and get another one because I use it all the time and I've used it consistently ever since I got it and I just don't ever seem to tire of it so Huge fan of this, um, would definitely recommend it, definitely my favorite. Next up is my Mulberry Mini Alexa. I just adore this bag. This probably won't come as a surprise to anyone, but it's been one of my favorites ever since I got it, and I've now had it for, I think, 18 months, probably coming up to two years, um, and it just doesn't get old for me at all. Like, I cannot get enough. I love the fact that it's a fairly casual style. You can absolutely dress it up if you want to, but it's just a really nice grab and go style, which is absolutely a mini bag. But because it can fit so much, it's actually really practical for day to day use as well. You know, I can fit in my long wallet in here. I can fit in a lot, actually. Like, the capacity is very, very generous indeed. The wear and tear isn't great, and I've documented this before. I do have that little dental at but even with that taken into consideration, I still love it and I still reach for it all the time. So absolutely another favorite. I'm um, definitely more of a casual style for me. Um, I do have quite a few other dressier bags. So when I am going out for like a dinner date, I tend not to use this, um, but certainly if I'm going out for, you know, a day of shopping and running, you know, like a brunch or a lunch, then I will happily grab this. And I just think it's fantastic and I do not tire of it at all. Next up is my Gucci Mini Diana, and I love this bag so much. And it's really surprised me in terms of how versatile I found it. When I first got it, I loved the overall look of it, but I didn't know if the bamboo handles would limit how often I'd want to wear it and with what I'd want to pair it with. I didn't know if maybe they would feel like a little bit tropical. And I just, that was like the big question mark for me with this bag but I just find it fantastic and I wore it happily all over winter. I'm planning on wearing it you know, through the warmer months as well. I do find it incredibly versatile and I love the fact that you can wear it all the different ways. You know, it's very, very comfortable as a top handle. You can also use the longer strap to wear it on the shoulder. You can wear it cross body. You can also fold the handles down as well. So if you wanted it to lie flat, it can do. The quality is lovely as well. You know, all the little details like feet on the bottom. You can fit a decent amount. It's not huge, um, but certainly larger than some mini bag styles I own and I just think it's gorgeous. Even though the leather is a smooth leather, so I was a little bit concerned about scratches, I've not had any issues at all. 
and it's a bag that I'm really excited to use every time I wear it. You know, I haven't gone tired of it at all and I just think it's beautiful. So huge, huge fan of this one, definitely worthy of the number three spot. Next up is my Saint Laurent Small Lulu, and this was actually the first Small Lulu that I got and what kind of started off my whole obsession with this size and style of bag. And it's had the most wear out of all my different ones um, as a result, you know, I've had it the longest, and it's done very, very well, even though it is in the white leather. And you do have that smooth leather with a Lulu style as well. Um, this one has silver hardware, which is a bit more of a rarity for me. I will usually go for gold hardware when I have the choice. But I actually really like the combination on this one. It's just a great bag. And, you know, I'm not going to bang on too much about the functionality because I've documented my love for this style a lot. But in terms of the white color, like, it's just done incredibly well. I do have a few bits of wear and tear here and there. Um, so I have a little scratch right there on the front. No wear on the corners and in general I just think it's looking fantastic considering how much I've used this bag and it is one of my most used styles because it is so versatile you know obviously white goes with everything and I just love it so huge fan of the style huge fan of this variation and I just love this one to bits Next up is my Chanel Classic Flap. Um, I have documented my slight issues with color transfer on this bag and it was entirely my fault in terms of pairing it with something I shouldn't do. Um, I am gonna go over color transfer later in the video, but nonetheless, I love the Chanel Classic Flap line. That is no secret to anyone. The medium size has really grown on me as well. It's probably my least favorite size for, well, pretty much the whole time I've been collecting and loving Chanel. Um, my mind only really was changed, uh, I guess, maybe two years ago, something like that, and now I really like it, um, but it isn't the largest, I'm not gonna lie, and with the double flap as well, you can't fit as much in it. In terms of the white shade, it is delicate, I'm not gonna lie, um, I would never go for lambskin in the Chanel Classic Flap line, I think that will be way too difficult to maintain, so the grain leather was definitely a good choice for me, um, but because of my experience with color transfer with it, it has made me, a little bit more nervous about using it, um, whereas when I first got it, I was using this all the time. It was my kind of go-to bag. I absolutely love the way it looks, but because it is so expensive, it definitely dampens the experience when you are really stressing about it. So for that reason, I do still absolutely use this, um, but it's more of a special occasion bag for me now. I certainly wouldn't just grab this without thinking about it. Um, it is just a little bit too pricey for me to do that. Nevertheless, I do think it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you have your heart set on a white one, then I still think they're beautiful, um, but if you are debating between the different colors and aren't as fussed either way, then I would say that maybe the white one isn't quite as practical when going for this level of expense for the bag. Next up is my Serena of Cadence, and this is the newest bag to my kind of white bag collection. I've gotten so many DMs about this bag, I can't even keep up, and it is a very different style for Serena if you're familiar with their designs. Um, it kind of has a bit more of a boxier look. For me, it really reminds me of the Celine box bag. Oh my goodness, I have been loving this thing so much. It is so, so beautiful. I love the color hardware. I think the pale gold hardware is just so beautiful and it's so different from every other style that I have in my bag collection. I love the fact that it opens out on top and you can actually fit a very, very decent amount in here. It's very, very roomy indeed. You have that beautiful blue lining as well. And I just love the fact that it feels very kind of quintessentially French, very easy going as well, but still feels like a very ladylike elegant bag, even though it is that boxier style. Very, very comfortable to wear as well. I have been experimenting wearing this kind of longer and shorter. I do think I prefer it a little bit shorter, but depending on your height as well and your torso length, you can really adjust it to however you want. The detailing on it is just so useful and I just can't get enough of this bag. Like I love pretty much everything about it. Like even little details that like you have the pocket on the back, but it's extra wide as well. So you can actually fit a very decent amount inside there. And I just think it's gorgeous. So definitely a new favorite for me. I do still have that video, I promise you guys, coming up as well. I have been away, so everything's been a little bit delayed, um, but I will go more into detail with this then. But so far, it's just been such a favorite for me. I just absolutely love it. And it's a really nice price option as well if you do want something that's very, very luxurious. Like the detailing looks really expensive, but it's not kind of a crazy Chanel price level or anything like that. Still, you know, affordable luxury, um, but it really doesn't skimp on the details at all. It's just absolutely beautiful. 
Next up is my Louis Vuitton Emprunt multi pochette. I absolutely love this style. Um, it doesn't get as much use as some of my other bags, just because even with the uh, double functionality, I do find it's pretty small, and I actually think that maybe because of the double pochette functionality, it almost limits what you can fit in, um, just because you do have that divider aspect. So. Even though you do have the two sections, you can't fit a ton in, and I'll often forget what section I put things in, so I kind of have to unzip things, which obviously it's a little bit easier if you do have just like one main compartment, even with a divider inside. That said, I do still think it's absolutely fantastic in terms of the versatility and how many ways you can wear it. I actually considered taking this one with me to Mexico. I didn't end up doing so just because I was a bit nervous taking something this expensive. Um, it definitely is more on the expensive side, especially now with the price increase. I couldn't believe it when I saw the new Louis Vuitton prices, like such a huge increase. Um, but that's for another video. Uh, nevertheless, I think that the quality is beautiful and I really love the detail and just the overall vibes. I think the cream and the gold make for a beautiful combination and that's a theme that you'll see repeated throughout this video, but I do think it's so elegant and timeless. The detailing is really lovely, the on point leather has done extremely well and I just think it's absolutely beautiful. So not one of my more used ones, um, but again, that's pretty much solely down to how much I can fit in. Um, that said, I do still absolutely love it. And it is just a really beautiful bag, which again, you're just gonna get a lot of bang for your buck if you do wear it all the different ways because of how many ways there are to wear it. Next up is my Saint Laurent Uptown Clutch. Um, and this one does rank a little bit lower and it's not because I dislike the bag because I don't at all. I think the Uptown bag is Still a fantastic option, especially if you're looking for an entry level clutch. Clutches are often an area where I think you can absolutely save money. I would always say if you're gonna splurge on your first luxury bag or are just building up your luxury bag collection, I would always prioritize more versatile and more frequently used bags, whether that's a tote bag for you or a shoulder bag, whatever it is, I think that clutches Whilst nice, they often don't get as much wear as some other styles and types of bags. So this is always an area where I think you can save, in which case the Uptown Clutch still represents a very luxurious option, a lot cheaper than some other luxury styles. That said, it ranks lower because I think if you're looking at this kind of bag, for a little bit more you can get the wristlet, which was my number one favorite style. I do think that one represents better value for money. Yes, it is more expensive, but you can fit a lot more in. You can wear it a few different ways. You know, you can use that one as a clutch. You can also use it as a wristlet as well, whereas you don't have that option with this one. So I like it, um, but since getting my wristlet, I pretty much not reached for this one at all. It's still a beautiful option. I just find my wristlet a little bit more versatile and functional. Next up is the Strathbury Mini. This is such an adorable style. And I've spoken before about how much I love Strathbury design. I think they are so beautiful and classic and just really underrated in terms of more accessible luxury styles. You know, these aren't mega, mega price. I'm um, still, you know, luxurious bags, but they kind of hit that nice in-between spot. Um, and I really don't feel like they get enough love. That said, it's also been on my list to get a larger version of this bag for a while. I still haven't gone around to it. So when I do finally see a good sale, um, with a color combination that I like. I am gonna jump on it because you can definitely get these at a discount. That said, this one is lovely. It is very, very small though, which is why I wanna try and get a larger style. It doesn't get a lot of use because of how tiny it is and it is small to the point where I feel like it almost looks a bit disproportionate with a lot of my outfits, especially in winter as well when you're wearing bulkier items, you know, coats and scarves. It's so small that it just looks tiny on and as a result, you can't actually fit that much in. Um, it's not terrible but as you can see you know it's a mini size bag it is helped by the fact that there aren't any compartments or anything like that um, but that said it's definitely not a huge one and I really think that the next size up would probably suit me a little bit better that one or the east west bag so I like it and um, this one doesn't get a whole lot of use um, but I definitely do want to try and get another style from Strathbury at some point because their bags are beautifully made and the attention to detail is genuinely lovely as well. Like, the hardware is a lovely colour, the stamping is really nice and the leather just feels like very very high quality especially for this price point. 
And last but not least, I do have my two tote bags. Um, so one is my Tom Ford uh, travel tote and the other one is my Chanel Deville. I'm kind of ranking these both at the bottom. Um, not because I dislike them, because I don't. Uh, I still own them, I still love them. But I'd say if you were considering getting a white or a cream style, I would definitely say to kind of edge in with a mini bag first, rather than going for something with this much white material basically. Um, it's not the easiest to keep clean and if you're a little bit nervous about a white style already, these definitely aren't going to make you feel any better. So first up is my Tom Ford bag. Um, I love this style. I think it's a really, really fantastic option for a travel bag. It is insanely comfy, which is essentially why I love it. Um, the leather straps are really quite thick. It's a very light bag as well, and I always seem to travel with a ton, so the lighter a travel bag, the better for me, um, just because it's not adding extra weight. I love the fact that you also wear it with the top handles. It's just a really nice, versatile option. That said, it does not do all that well in terms of wear and tear. Um, it's definitely gone a little bit smushy. And whilst I have sprayed it now, I unfortunately sprayed it a little bit too late because I did manage to get a mark on it, which I've not managed to get off. So I think that's kind of the price for going for a very, very pale canvas in such a large surface area. With a smaller surface area, it's gonna be less prone to wear and tear and just a little bit more manageable. Whereas if you get something of this size, it's just going to be that much more prone to getting marks and just kind of attracting dirt. So again, whilst I absolutely love this bag, but it's still probably my go-to travel bag, not the most practical. Um, and so if you're kind of on the fence in terms of what size scale, I would definitely always recommend going for a smaller style. Um, similarly, my Chanel de Vilto, which I adore, like it is so, so beautiful. The pearl detail is just stunning. You have that beautiful kind of light tan leather. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous bag, but oh my goodness, like this is a nerve wracking experience when you take it out. And the same is true of my Chanel Classic Flap. And I do think that price when it comes to these kind of bags absolutely needs to be taken into consideration. You know, you're gonna freak out very differently when you're taking out a 50 pound bag versus a 5,000 pound bag, at least I do anyway. So that really does affect my kind of enjoyment and use of a bag. And when it comes to something like this, you know, it's a great deal cheaper than a classic flat, but it's still very, very expensive. And it's huge and so pale. So I do use this, but it's definitely not a frequently used for item in my wardrobe. I have to be very sure of where I'm going and kind of what I'm going to encounter to want to risk it. So I would definitely say if you are a bit nervous about white bags, I would definitely consider carefully before going for something uh, this large and this pale and this expensive. It's just, it's a nerve wracking experience and I'm not a particularly uh, nervous white bag user at this point, but even so, this one it definitely makes me hesitate. So whilst beautiful, certainly not the most practical. Next up is all about color transfer, and I'd still say this is my number one most asked question across all the different social media platforms. And I have answered it many times before, um, but it's still, again, the most popular question I get asked. So I wanted to do a whole section specifically around white bags as well, because I do think that there are a lot of misconceptions about color transfer and what bags are susceptible. So the most common kind of um, myth slash question I hear is, is this bag um, susceptible to color transfer? And it's not really how it works. So technically speaking, uh, no one bag is more susceptible to color transfer than another. Some colors are more likely to show color transfer. So obviously if you have a white bag versus a black bag, you're going to be able to see color transfer more, but there aren't certain materials or finishes that make it more susceptible. Now, where that kind of differs a little bit is when it comes to something like patent leather or lambskin, those are equally likely to get color transfer, but they're that much more difficult to clean if you do get color transfer on them, which is why they often get a rep for being bad for color transfer, when technically you're just as likely to get it on something like caviar or grain leather, but it's a little bit easier to clean something like this versus lambskin or patent leather. And following on from that, the two biggest things that you have to consider when thinking about color transfer really aren't anything to do with the brand of the bag or the material of the bag. And really it's much more to do with what you're planning on wearing with it, as well as how you're planning on wearing the bag. So the number one thing to consider is just really avoiding any kind of clothing that can transfer dye onto the bag. And that's everything from darker denim right through to darker colored clothing, which might have a lot of dye, which can go onto the back of your bag. 
Similarly, you also want to consider how you're going to wear the bag. So I did end up getting color transfer on this one. When I was first wearing the bag, I was wearing it just kind of handheld and occasionally on my shoulder as well. But then I took this with me on a trip to London. I wanted to be hands-free, so I converted it into a crossbody. I wore it all day long with a black jersey dress. I thought I'd be fine because I wasn't wearing it with denim. It was a brand new dress. I think I got it from the Nordstrom anniversary sale. Didn't think twice about it. And when I took it off that night, I did see that I got black dye on the back. I was absolutely horrified because usually I am very careful about color transfer. I'm very aware of not wearing dark denim when it comes to white bags. Not really wearing too many of my white bags cross body all the time either. I thought I'd be totally fine with a simple black jersey dress. But of course I didn't test it and I did end up getting that color transfer on the back of this bag. I was able to clean it and I will go over that in a second, but those are by far the two biggest factors you have to consider. One, what clothing are you gonna wear it with? You're gonna to wanna to stick to paler colors or otherwise clothing that you know isn't going to spread its dye onto your bags. And then secondly, how you're gonna wear the bag. If you're going to wear a bag as a clutch in your hand, anything like that, you're gonna be absolutely fine. But if you do wanna wear your bag crossbody, that's definitely something you have to consider. And then finally, I quickly wanna run over care and maintenance. So what you can do to prevent color transfer, as well as what you can do if you do end up getting color transfer on your bag. Uh, so firstly, much like skincare, prevention is the number one key here. So if you can prevent color transfer from happening in the first place, that is obviously going to be a much better option. So the secret tip here is just use a simple spray. And um, so this one is Scotchgard. Colonel Pro also works very, very well. And um, this one is actually multi-purpose and I have so many cans of this in our cupboard because it's incredibly useful. You can use it on clothing, you can use it on furniture, you can also use it on leather goods as well. Simple spray, um, I would say to do outside because it does smell a little bit toxic. Um, you just kind of leave it dry and it's pretty much good to go. You know, you don't have to worry about dirt and color transfer as much and it also makes it waterproof as well. So I almost always use this on my suede shoes and boots because it really does help protect them against the elements. It's also very useful if you want to color lock your denim and you can also use it on your bags as well. When it comes to leather bags though, especially very expensive ones, I would always say do a patch test. So do it on the bottom or somewhere that you're not really going to notice it if it does look a little bit different. I've never had any bad experiences with it, um, but that said, always better to be safe rather than sorry, but this one is a great way of maintaining your items and just generally making sure they look very good for much longer. If you do have a color transfer on your items, then the best way I found to clean the marks are these two creams right here. So one is just a general leather cream and the other one is this Colonel Carbon Gold High Tech Cream. I um, mean, you can get this at a bunch of different places, but it's really, really great at just removing all dirt and marks from your leather bags. I would say one very, very important key here is to make sure that you're using a white cloth, particularly when it comes to white items. You're not gonna wanna use like a yellow or a blue cloth. You're gonna wanna make sure it's very, very neutral indeed. You just pop a little bit on the cloth and you gently rub it on, and it does wonders in terms of getting any dirt and marks off any leather item. I did use the Colonel product on this bag and it really did help, um, but this color transfer was particularly stubborn. So I also went ahead and I tried this as well, just to get the last little bit off, and it did a pretty good job. This was one that I think I found on a blog post or something like that. It was something relating to Chanel color transfer. Someone recommended this, it's just the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. To be honest, I'm not really sure how it works. You basically have to wet it and kind of gently um, try and sponge off the transfer if that makes any sense, but it does seem to have done a pretty good job. Um, I would say it's not a miracle worker by any means, but this in combination with the Colonel product really did do a fairly good job. You can still see a little bit of transfer, um, but it's a lot better than it was. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with both these products. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I suspect this is just the longest video in the world, so I will do my best to cut it down, um, but there is a lot to say about white bags and maintenance in general. I hope I covered everything that you wanted to know. If I missed anything out, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I will include links to everything I featured from the bags to the products in the description section. If you enjoyed the video, please do give this a thumbs up, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.